Hey everyone, welcome back to Mason Woodshop. In this video, I'm gonna be helping you decide which type of laser is right for you. So over here on my left, we have the Xtool S1 diode-based laser. And over here, we have the Xtool P2 CO2-based laser. Um, also, just a note on the P2, the P2S, so a uh, revised version of the P2 was just released. So I am gonna be talking about the P2 specifically in this video, but I would highly recommend that if you are interested in the P2, that you do buy the P2S uh, at this time. So what are the main differences between these two lasers? So I mentioned diode and CO2. And I think that that's really kind of the main difference between the two, other than kind of the gargantuanness of the P2 compared to the S1. But let's talk about diode versus CO2 first. So a diode-based laser is going to be using, well, diode-based lasers to do the etching, to do the cutting, to do the engraving and that sort of thing. So what's super cool about the S1 is that there are these swappable laser modules. So you'll see right here that I have the 20 watt version installed. I also have the two watt IR laser, which is going to bring additional capabilities when it does come to engraving metal and that sort of thing. So when it does come to engraving jewelry, um, the two watt laser really excels compared to the 20 watt, I, or 20 watt diode, which really isn't capable of engraving metal without doing special laser etching spray. And then it's more of an etch versus an engrave. So the S1 is available in 10, 20 and 40 watt flavors. Uh, I would generally recommend going with the more powerful 40 watt version. You're going to have the most material flexibility with it when it does come to thicker material, when it does come to speed and that sort of thing. So I think the 40 watt S1 with a two watt IR laser gives you the most flexibility with the S1. Now on the P2, we have a 55 watt CO2 based laser. So there's a giant tube at the back here. Um, which does also require some coolant. So there is kind of a mix of antifreeze and water to make sure that it is um, kind of appropriate temperature. And the 55 watt CO2 laser, so it's a totally different laser technology than the diode. So some different capabilities. It can cut clear acrylic, really thick clear acrylic. It can etch clear acrylic, whereas the S1 really can't touch clear acrylic. It can work with opaque and like mo mostly opaque uh, acrylic. So I have had some success with the S1 with that, but the 55 watt CO2 is gonna give you the most material flexibility. You're gonna be able to cut much thicker material. You're gonna be able to engrave and cut much faster than the S1. So those are kind of like the main differences as far as the actual cutting capabilities. But let's take a little bit of a, a look at the units themselves and some of the working areas and expandability. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the dimensions of the S1. And I do have a more detailed video on the S1 that I highly recommend if you want like the full tour of the entire laser but it is about 760 millimeters wide by 560 millimeters deep. Now you do have some cabling and hoses out the back. So you do have to factor that in when you are looking to build a space for it um, and 180 millimeters tall. Now that um, does change when you add the riser base, which makes this a kind of just like a really nice expandable unit. You can add the rotary attachment and all that sort of thing. Um, the working area inside here, so it's just under 500 millimeters wide by 319 millimeters deep. So you do have a pretty good working space. You can work with thicker material, especially if you remove the honeycomb and have the riser base in there, which really brings a lot of flexibility with this. And the entire laser unit weighs about 20 kilograms. So it is relatively portable. You don't wanna move it when it's on the riser base. So you wanna take off the top, like this part of it, if you do have the riser base, but it's not unreasonable to kind of move this from place to place. So I think that that's, again, if you are at a craft show or that sort of thing and want to do some engraving on the spot, I think that the S1 is something that you can do that with. And now moving to the P2, we have a much physically larger unit. So this is a thousand millimeters wide, um, but it does have an integrated air assist. So with the S1, you do have that external air assist that you have to find a place for. So a thousand millimeters wide isn't as bad when you do factor in that air assist on the S1. Uh, it's 600 millimeters deep. Again, there are some hose and connections off the back. So you do lose a little bit of depth with that. And it's 270 millimeters tall. And when you add the riser base to this, which I do have downstairs, I just have to add it to it. Uh, it adds quite a bit. So I think it's like another like 20 uh, or 200 millimeters or so. So this is gonna become quite the beast in my shop. This also weighs 45 kilograms, so more than double the weight of the S1. So this is not very portable at all. So it's not something, even like kind of with how the weight ba balance is there, it's not something that I would feel comfortable moving on my own um, at all. So now inside here, I do have the slats installed right now. I also have the honeycomb panel for it, 
but the entire working space is about 600 millimeters wide by 308 millimeters deep. So it is about 100 millimeters wider than the S1, but you do lose about 10 millimeters of depth when it does come to uh, the comparison of that. But I find that this space in here is extremely nice. You can also, again, with the riser base, you can use a conveyor feeder and feed, I think like 10 feet of material through here and have it deal with that. So both of these lasers are highly expandable and that's something that I think is super cool about both of them. Okay, so I'm not gonna be going through like all of the material capabilities of both of these lasers, but just to kind of throw a little bit of a divide, over here we have what I've been able to do with the S1 and over here is some P2 examples. Uh, the S1, it's, this is like straight off, well not straight off because I did put a bit of a lacquer finish on it, but this is a stone coaster off of the 20 watt laser, turned it out absolutely perfectly. And just to compare to the CO2 laser, again, almost the exact same level of detail on both. The, the interesting thing is like different types of lasers give different kind of colors on the engraves. Like here we have one from the two watt laser, which is a little darker. So it's kind of interesting with that, but um, the S1, if you're working with stone coasters, just as capable as the P2. Uh, also, I wanna highlight kind of the difference between these two glass coasters. So now while the S1 doesn't natively etch glass, uh, and this, the P2 does, so this is straight off the P2, no paint or anything like that but I was able to use this tempera paint and um, paint the back of this and do kind of the, the mirror uh, on it and, um, or the, the flip the, the image and turned out really, really nice. So again, that's where like the, the S1, when it does come to like using other things like this, you can get some really good results, even on material that it doesn't natively support. Similarly, while the S1, the 20 watt laser doesn't formally engrave metal, I was able to use this black laser uh, or black metal laser spray which goes on white and then you get this like nice black etch on the metal however the two watt ir laser really kind of did like a super nice engrave on this metal right here so these are golf ball markers nothing on the back of that one um, but turned out really really nice now there are some material limitations on the s1 um, so this is quarter inch plywood and you'll see just like the burning on the side there that's something that you don't get from the p2 the p2 just cuts through quarter inch material like butter so you get like a really nice clean edge so while you can cut thicker material on the p2 it's also about being able to cut thinner material with a much cleaner edge so i think that that's something that i do want to note there and just kind of like wrapping up some of the stuff on um, the S1, so metal business card. So it's got a coating, so you're basically removing the coating. It's the same with using the, the rotary attachment. This, it's the same RA2 Pro that works on both of these lasers. So you can get like really nice results, but you're essentially just cutting away or etching away that the coating that's on these sorts of um, cups. Now, so like if you had just kind of like a raw stainless steel, you're not gonna be able to touch that with either of these lasers but when it does come to coated, so whether it's a Yeti or kind of any of that sort of thing, you can get really good results from both. Um, leather, both lasers do that really nicely. Um, and here's some black acrylic. So this is where the S1 can cut black acrylic. It's good, it has to be thinner, thinner black acrylic. So I think this is three millimeter, um, but really nice engrave and then really clean cut. However, when you move up to the P2 or P2S, you can then get into clear acrylic. So I didn't have to coat this with anything. This was just kind of like straight up engrave from the CO2 laser and straight up cut, really, really clean. It's also just shocking how quick it is able to cut this. And same with kind of like, here's some three millimeter plywood off of the P2, um, really nice results and just amazing at how quick it cuts that. Showing you some of the, the thicker material that we can do and we do have a little bit of burning on the edge of these, but we have some really thick MDF as well as um, just solid walnut. So this is not plywood, this is just like straight up solid walnut. And look at that engraved. So like just really quite impressive and being able to cut it out is nice. And again, I already noted the glass off it. So the P2 is a little bit more capable, especially when it does come to working with that clear acrylic, thicker material, cutting faster. Those are kind of the, the main creature comforts of the P2. 
So when it comes to material positioning and focusing, the two lasers are very different. And something I want to note about the S1 is that I was reviewing this at the same time that I had the Creality Falcon 2 Pro uh, diode laser in the shop as well, which is very comparable to this. And it had an integrated camera system, but I found that the X-Tool pinpointing mechanism and focus mechanism was so much easier to use, even compared to the Creality Falcon 2 Pro that had that camera. So what's really cool is you can just kind of like grab this, move it around, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be marking the area where we want to position our material. We're going to be using the Xtool Creative Space software, or XCS, which is phenomenal. And first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to set the depth. So what we can do is we can move this crosshair. So we've got some three inch or three millimeter plywood here right now. I'm just going to auto measure that. It's going to drop the pin right where I had it marked. So it's going to know exactly where that material or what the material thickness is. I'm going to reset the pin. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our processing area. And what's super cool here is that we can kind of do any sort of uh, geometric shape. So we're gonna do a rectangle in this case, start marking. And what we do here is we can basically pick like the top left, press the button, then go down, bottom right, press the button. And then we have that area marked and we can move our logo in and then we know that we're kind of in that safe spot that we had just marked in here close it up and we can process that um, cut so that's the way that it works on the s1 and it's something that i generally really like so it is a little bit more manual compared to the p2 which we'll get to in a moment but it is really quite fun to use and you can get super precise and it is nice having um, kind of that the crosshair there so you can make sure that your material is perfectly level or square. So really quite happy with that. Now let's move to the P2. Okay, so now processing on the P2 is significantly different because it does have a dual uh, camera system in here. So there's a very wide angle lens up there. And then there is a more detailed lens uh, attached to the laser head itself. So um, this is where we, you can basically, once you put the material in here, you, just, you can just close the lid and then just stick to software. So you'll see in the software, just close the lid and we're just gonna update that. Um, okay, so we're good there. And then what we can do is we can take a close shot and let's say that we did want to, to kind of do our cut and engrave in this area. We can move the laser over there. And this is just gonna give us a lot more precision. And um, so like, let's say that there's just like a really specific spot that we wanted to put this. We can put that there and there are also kind of two different types of measuring the material thickness. We can just do aimed measure and select kind of the area where we have that. It'll move over and do that measurement. So uh, using LiDAR. So it's really quite cool how it does that. Then we can go to process. We haven't set our material type or anything like that, but we could go to process and then be done. So the P2 is definitely a little more software focused than the S1, but I wouldn't let the way that you uh, do the focusing and material selection and all that kind of stuff with the S1 be a limiting factor when it comes to your decision making, because it is generally quite nice to, to be able to use. So now that we've looked at the differences and a lot of the similarities between these two lasers, which one is right for you? So let's talk a little bit about the target audience. And the S1, I would say, is kind of ideal for the hobbyist, the DIYer, um, somebody looking to get a small business going, trying out an Etsy shop, that sort of thing. It gives tremendous versatility and expandability with all of the accessories. You could cut and engrave a wide variety of material. You will be somewhat limited as far as thickness and that sort of thing compared to the P2, but an extremely versatile laser, especially when it does come to those swappable laser modules, which I think is a super cool thing with the S1. The software is super easy to use. Again, that's the same for both of these lasers. And I think that if you are in the market for a laser, I think that the S1 really kind of makes that great entry level laser and also something that you can keep for years and are gonna get a lot of capability out of. So the S1 typically retails for around 1500 to 2000 US dollars depending on the laser module that you're getting with it. But I would highly recommend looking at the bundles and especially one that has a 40 watt plus the two watt IR. I think you're gonna get huge flexibility out of that. Things like the riser base, I think are really quite helpful. Same with the honeycomb panel, the rotary attachment. There's just so much cool stuff that you can do with this. So take a look at the bundles, which will probably run you closer to $2,500 uh, all in. Now the P2, I think is um, definitely kind of a step up from the S1 with different capabilities. Not all are better because you don't have those swappable laser heads and you also can't engrave metal with the P2 or P2S. 
So the P2, I think, is for kind of the, the more, not necessarily more advanced hobbyists, but probably the more demanding hobbyists when it comes to cutting thicker material or working with clear acrylic, which was really kind of one of the main reasons why I expressed interest in the P2 was the, the clear acrylic piece of it. So um, whether, yeah, so more demanding hobbyists, uh, more demanding DIY or small business owners, I think that the P2 is ideal for the small business owner that has an Etsy shop or something along those lines, because you're gonna get fat, uh, faster cuts, faster engraves. And I think that that's really kind of where the time is money uh, idea with small business kind of comes into play with the P2. So those are kind of like the, the two main things that are gonna be different between these as far as the audiences. The P2 does retail for about double the price of the S1. So you're kind of around $4,000 to $4,500 depending on the P2 versus P2S. And um, probably closer to like $5,500 when it does come to those bundles that include things like the riser base, the conveyor, uh, rotary attachment, those sort of thing. But I do think that the bundles are gonna give you the best bang for the buck. So kind of my recommendations, you're like, you're around $2,500, you're around $5,500 for the bundle. And you also see a lot of P2 and P2S bundle or buyers or users also buy either the F1 or F1 Ultra fiber lasers from Xtool as well, which is gonna give them that capability to work with metal. Uh, so I think that that's really kind of where the P2S will shine. Now I'm gonna be keeping both of these lasers. So the P2 is gonna have kind of a permanent fixture in the shop. I am gonna be adding the riser base to it out here. The S1 is gonna be going downstairs in my basement and uh, likely with the two watt IR laser in there relatively permanently so that I can do engraves on metal jewelry um, and some other metal work with it. So that's kind of where the S1 is gonna be shining for me. And yeah, I think that that's kind of my coverage on these two lasers right now. So with Black Friday, Cyber Monday coming up, with Christmas coming up, be on the lookout for some sales from Xtool, but I will have links in the description below to both of these lasers, as well as the P2S, which I think I would recommend over the P2, just given that it just came out, does have a little bit more capability than the P2, but is a very similar uh, laser overall. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos soon. Bye.